What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, I'm gonna make the case for why I think there is a major refresh coming for the Model S and X in 2018. Now, Tesla probably does not want me to make this episode because if I was buying a Model S or X, I wouldn't and I would hold out. You know, I love Tesla, I'm a shareholder, but I gotta keep it real with you guys. I've had this feeling in my gut for weeks now. The more and more news I keep reading about the Model 3, I cannot help but think it is far technologically superior than the Model S and X, and they have not transported all these new features and technology into their higher end vehicles yet, but it is coming. So let's dive down and break into this. First of all, I wanted to say that I test drove over the holidays a Model X with my dad. It was an awesome experience. I had a ton of fun, but I couldn't help think that the vehicle looked a little bit outdated compared to the Model 3 in the pictures. I don't know, the touchscreen just seemed a little slow. I just got the sense that it wasn't the most up-to-date Tesla. The more I talked to the employee about, well, why is the Model 3 using a different battery cell architecture? You know, why does the Model 3's touchscreen look different? They just really didn't have good answers for me and I wasn't convinced. Then today when I was listening to the Tesla show, which is by far my favorite podcast about Tesla, you guys got to check it out. Episode 83, they did a deep dive about 35 minutes in about all these technologically advanced features that are showing up in the Model 3, making it look embarrassingly more advanced than the Model S or X. Now I want to disclaim this. I haven't seen a Model 3 in person, let alone driven one, but the Tesla show podcast guys has spent a ton of time with the Model 3, a ton of time with the Model S and X. These guys are pros. They made three incredible points about technologies that are in the Model 3 that are not in the Model S and X that I want to bring up. The first one is the battery cell architecture for the Model 3 is based on these new 2170 cells that are more energy dense that it's inputting in the Model 3. Now, I think it's a little bit funny that they would have this new battery technology and only roll it out to their cheaper vehicle. And I think that is leading to dramatically improved specifications for the Model 3. And that is why we've seen a bunch of news and evidence of Tesla actually underselling the Model 3. But we'll get to that later. The second point they make is that the touchscreen of the Model 3 is based on this much newer Intel chip versus the old NVIDIA Tegra chip, which is used for the Model S and X. And what's fascinating about this is they describe the use case of this. They say it's like going from an iPhone to an Android. The difference is night and day. It's noticeably faster. It's just an all around dramatically improved experience with the Model 3 touchscreen. So I thought that was a little funny too. Reason number three, on the interior of the Model 3, there's an entirely redesigned HVAC system for heating and cooling cooling, which seems far more advanced, which has not made it into the S or X yet. Beyond that, the Model 3 also has an interior front-facing camera, which the Tesla show speculates would allow you to put your car in the Tesla network so you could monitor what's happening inside the car. Once again, the Model S and X do not have this. So I was thinking about all of this, that I did a little more Googling because I remember reading on Electrek, there was actually a bunch of reports of the Model 3's performance being a lot better than Tesla said it was. And the more I dived into these stats, the more blown away I was. According to an EP document, the long range Tesla Model 3 was able to achieve a range of 334 miles EPA rated, but then Tesla asked them to only rate the vehicle at 310 miles of range. That makes no sense to me. Additionally, the vampire drain, when you leave your car parked, you know, EVs lose a little bit of their battery each day. With the Model S, originally when it came out in 2012, it was estimated to be 1% per day, which is, you know, a lot. That can compound to like 30% per more per month of your battery that will just drain if you don't leave your car plugged in. Well, in the Model 3, it's only 4% per month, which according to Electrek is still dramatically better than the status quo for the Model S or X. So now we have a Model 3 that they're underselling on range. It's vampire drain is way better than S or X. Beyond that, according to extrapolations made from Electrek from that same EPA document, it looks like the Model 3 can charge at a rate of 210 kilowatts versus the Model S and X only 120 kilowatts. So, but the cheaper car is now able to charge faster too. I mean, none of this makes sense. Additionally, Electrek also reported there was this YouTube channel that tested the zero to 60 time of the Model 3 and it clocked in at 4.6 seconds for the long range vehicle versus the 5.1 seconds that Tesla's advertised. It seems like Tesla's been underselling the specifications of the Model 3 all around. I have some of my own theories about this as well. In Q4, we saw a fascinating shift for Tesla where they only manufactured about 22,000 Model S and X vehicles yet sold about 28,000. That means that 6,000 difference came straight out of inventory. Inventory. This is the first time we've seen Tesla desire to push so much inventory. If I was Tesla, this is exactly what I would do before a major refresh. 
get rid of all the old inventory because the value of those cars is going to drop precipitously when they refresh the Model S and X with all these new features and technology. This is the last point that really convinced me. You guys remember a couple months ago when Elon Musk seemed super OCD and way too into this point of the Model 3 is not the third iteration of the Model S and X. I really want to make that clear. The Model S and X are still the premium cars. They're still way better. I think he is doing psychology one-on-one -on -one here. He is projecting his biggest insecurity, which is the fact that people will find out that there is a massive divergence in the technological features of the S and X while they scale Model 3 production. And he's freaking out. People will figure this out before they can get the features into the S and X. And that will hurt S and X sales before they can ramp the Model 3. So why would Tesla be doing this? The bottom line is they don't have much of a choice. They are so limited on supplies, especially batteries for these new 2170 cells, which I think are the bulk of the reason that the performance of the Model 3 is so much improved, that they are just being forced to wait until they can scale Model 3 production before putting all these new batteries and new features into the Model S and X. Do I think this is a good thing or bad thing? If this news gets out and that people start to realize this, and this is actually what's going on, and Tesla has been underselling the Model 3 because they're worried it's much more advanced than the SRX, that it will hurt Model S and X sales in the near term. But it, taking a step back, the Model S is the best-selling luxury sedan in America. The Model X is quickly becoming one of the best-selling luxury SUVs in America. These cars are kicking ass even with their current specifications. If Tesla does major overhauls to make these cars even better, then they are only going to be even more compelling to consumers. They're, they're only going to take even more market share in the categories they compete in. As a long-term Tesla investor, I'm stoked about the idea of this refresh because I think Tesla, you know, we haven't even seen the best that they have up their sleeve, which is going to be these unbelievable S and X with tweaked design, with the new touchscreen, with the longer range, with the faster charging times. That's all coming and I'm stoked about it, but I think it's fascinating to note that right now, the cars on the road, it looks like the Model 3 is more advanced than the S and X. And I think that indicates and is evidence that we are ready to see a major refresh for Tesla's higher end vehicles coming in 2018. I would love to know what you guys think about this theory. Am I right? It's just a prediction. It's just a gut feeling I have. All the evidence is piling up. I I think you guys got to listen to that episode 83 of the Tesla show podcast. I'll put the link in the description. See for yourself. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not. This is hyper change. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.